I only need 50 of you for the time being, that is. Strategy, speed, and physical contact. Phase one! Phase two! Has he named a successor? Skujana. The least likely candidate. Aluja King! These so called swans have almost reached Guapulawa. That is the time to strike. Let the people think that his death was caused by the white men. See to it. about the king and his people, the more I realized just how arrogant the attitudes of the colonial office and Lord Charles were in this whole affair. Shaka had so far proved a most affable host. His power was his security, and we were fools to have thought that we could simply change the course of history with what we would like to think of as the mystique of white civilization. They are like monkeys trying to steal the autumn harvest and yet you treat them like kings. Why, Mbosi? There are things you must learn, Omar. Uncle boy. What things can they teach us, Mbosi? Like how many monkeys fight in their armies? What they really want from us? And what we can learn from them? Uncle Mbosi.
That verdict is not ours to decide, Dingan. I am the king's brother. In the name of my ancestor, I order you to kill him now! <laughs> Yes, Jinga, you are his brother, but also his heir. Masam. You have destroyed the evidence, Jinga, but not your guilt. I wonder what you would have told us about you, Sarana, and Bob. You are a fool, Jinga. If you truly wanted to rule in his place, you should have framed Shaka's death the way Shaka would have framed it. Using a valid strategy, he's built a nation of warriors. Would you have the people believe that a Mufasuba would ever turn his fear against his own emperor? It is the work of destiny. As a man lives, so shall he die. You remember that, Jinga? Remember that. She asks, can you save him? Can you give him life? Like you did to that girl. <coughs> she was in a coma. She would have recovered by herself if they hadn't tried to bury her. Miek, miek, miek. You know you'll never understand that. He can relate only to light and darkness. He feels the darkness approaching and he wants you to give him back the light. Washing your hands of the whole thing. Well, why not? Hmm? I think it would be fair to say that you had it coming to him. Ooh. You think we deserve to die, do you? Do you? What? Who is that mob out there, Finn? I tell you, Mr. Finn, Sharka's armies without Sharka may be a greater threat than we've ever dreamed possible. And I fear that we may be the first victims of that anarchy. We have a chance to win the king's favor. We cannot fling it to the wind. We control Sharka's soul. We control the whole of Southern Africa. Control his soul? That's the game, isn't it? by proving that we have the powers of life and death. That's a game, all right, Mr. Phil. And this minute is called survival. Well, we don't have those powers, Lieutenant, and that man <coughs> is coughing up blood and phlegm, which would indicate a punctured lung. Well, if that is the case, then he's as doomed as that girl he had murdered. Then you must pray. For him? No. For us.
beg pardon, sir. What is it, Captain? News from the north, sir. Sharker. The devil's that savage up to now. Nothing, sir. Unless, that is, the Zulus are given to being commanded by spirits. Oh, get on with it, man. Speak plainly. According to a report from Colonel Clouty, sir, we have every reason to believe that Shaka has been murdered. Murdered? Not by farewell, I hope. No, sir. By one of his own people, apparently. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, sir. I took the liberty of checking Colonel Clouty's sources. Stabbed through the heart, apparently, over a week ago. Good. Very good. Tell Colonel Clouty to return his troops to the Cape as soon as possible. Isn't that a bit hasty, sir? The Zulus may have regrouped under new leadership. Highly unlikely, Captain. Shaka was a fluke. The natives will revert to their natural state of sniveling old women. Well, now, you must excuse me. I have a luncheon appointment. Good day. Come, ladies. All around us was death and destruction. The uncertainty caused by the attempt on the king's life had created such panic and mistrust that warrior turned on warrior, and any poor soul found not displaying the required amount of grief at the king's demise was summarily slaughtered or impaled. It was a most terrible period of our stay, and fear and uncertainty became our constant companions. Blender. Inja, Nikos Namsanj. He asked after the king's health, Mr. Finn. Thank you, Mr. Fector. I got that. The great elephant's condition is stationary. The moment there is any improvement, you'll be informed. I hope you are not lying. If the king is dead and you are keeping the truth from the Zulu people, your carcasses will provide the cushions for Shaka's grave. If you don't believe what I'm saying to you, then go and look for yourself. I'll return at sunset to be further informed. And if he does peg out Boyo, you'll be the last one to find out. Well, how is he really? <sighs> He's dying, Francis. Doesn't seem to be a damn thing I can do about it. If his fever doesn't break, I doubt he'll make sunset. It has been many days, too many. People must see Shaka now before panic sets in. Well, he can't stand up, let alone walk to the gate. Then we'll have to give him a helping hand. Francis, the man is dying. Let's try, Henry. It might be our last hope. I'm afraid there is nothing we can do, Mrs. Farewell. From Colonel Clouty's notification, it would appear that your husband never succeeded in making contact with that savage. Indeed, it is doubtful that his party ever set foot on the shores of Natal. I've said as much in my communique to Lord Bathurst, whose foolish idea it was to sanction this whole affair. But how 
can you simply assume they never got there? There is no mention of them in any of the reports we've received. One report, Sir Charles, one miserable report from a messenger from God knows where, tells you Shaka is dead and you believe him. Yes, I'm, I'm truly sorry, Mrs. Farewell. And if there's anything I can do to hasten your return to England, I should be only too happy to oblige. Mrs. Farewell. Anything to help? Mrs. Farewell. Excuse me. Mrs. Farewell. Simpson, Harlow Simpson, South African commercial advertiser. If you will permit, ma'am, I have an inquiry or two to make. In reference to what, Mr. Simpson? Your husband and Shaka Zulu. Well, that's old news, isn't it? As your newspaper has so dauntlessly reported, they're both dead. His Majesty's valiant knight pitted against the Zulu dragon, inflicting death even as the warmth of life drained from his own veins. I have rarely read such trash, Mr. Simpson, even in the shoddiest of drawing room plays. Nettles me to have my husband's name tainted by your waggish tabloid. Good day, Mr. Simpson. Drive on! You're right, Mrs. Farewell. It was trash. Perhaps I can make it up to you by printing the truth. With your help, that is. And what is the truth? His Majesty's valiant knight pitted against the blindness and racial bigotry of the Cape's governor. Stop! Somerset. Firmly believes the only way to deal with these Kaffirs is to blow their heads off. Your husband's outlook was more enlightened. His eulogy could be a valuable lesson to the future administrators of colonial Africa. But then there's no reason to write a eulogy, is there? He's alive, isn't he? And on what do you base that assumption, Mr. Simpson? Your intuition. And the fact that you came to see Somerset to help find your husband. Well, I admire your resourcefulness, Mr. Simpson. But I suggest you concentrate your efforts on more current topics. As I said, my husband is old news. Drive on! If you should reconsider, madam, I think you will find our waggish tabloid may prove to be your best and only ally. Added touch for show.
do Bugaz. The people are assembled. In the last few weeks, we've done a great deal of rushing and very little treading. I fear the angels won't let us get away with it for much longer. Well, the angels have always been a rather understanding lot, Finn. But I take your point. But I do not think that Shark is a believer. Like most great people, the empire that he's built was in his imagination before it became a reality. Well, you've saved his skin, old boy. 
And now let's deal with his imagination. May I speak, the visitor? I know who was responsible for that attempt on your life. Go on. Perhaps my brother's son can tell you. Well? After you wounded my brother, I sent spies north of Pongolo River. They tell me that Soshangani, Zwide, and those few who have survived Koki Hill have built a new and powerful army trained in the Ikwa and the methods of Shaga. The spies tell me that an attack on Kobulawayo was planned as soon as Zwide received confirmation that the great elephant has fallen in the visit. How can you be sure that Zwide's conspiracy was not born in the heart of one of my faithful subjects? You, for instance. We share the same blood for it. Few men know you as well as I. If I had wished to take your life, I would have succeeded, my brother. Leave me now. Amban Majid. Amban Kosi Pumula. Choose ten of the Ufa Simba and have them impaled in the center of the cattle fold where all can see, even if the man was an imposter. My regiment should have realized it before the final blow was dealt. Men are often blind. As, as you are. In the case of your half-brother. I have known since the night of his death that Dingane is to blame. And, and yet you let him live? I need him now. More than ever, he'll attract dissenters like cow dung attracts flies. And when they try to strike again, I'll be prepared. It is Mkabai that surprises me. If what they say is true, then the Aisangoma possesses powers we cannot ignore. I want those powers at my service.
If the leopard were offered wings to fly, he would be foolish to refuse them. What is this marking used for? It is used to transmit feelings, ideas, over great distances. I have messengers for that. But this ensures that what you say here is heard there in exactly your words. Writing is also a way of storing ideas so that what you say today may be heard generations from now. It is a form of immortality. than George. He's greater than George. He's greater than Shaka. He's dead, hanging from a tree near weeping old women. Is not worthy of a king. No, it's not. How did he come to die? He was... He was betrayed... by those that he loved the most. Yes. It is a mistake to love, especially for a king. Why are you ever silent? Are you afraid? Do you bow down before this dead King Christ? No. Christ is not my King. Ah. You have doubts that Christ is the King of all kings. Yes, Nkosi, I, I have my doubts. So you two belong to different tribes? Yes. And King Jesus came from your tribe? Not from my tribe. From his tribe. The ways of you whites are a dark mystery. Those warriors near the tree with equals, were they part of his regiments? No, we have no regiments. Only 12 men, unarmed. Yet you call him king of kings, greater than Shaga. Why? Look at his lips. They're moving. He's saying, forgive them, Baba, for they know not what they do. Forgive? 
How can anyone expect to rule with such a foolish strategy? Many are of the same opinion. And what does my brother George think? George? His people? His country? People all over the world. They worship that king as the divine sovereign sent by the ancestors to bring peace. But, uh, I know very well that King Jesus had great power. Well, whether my friend Zacharias or you know it or not, Christ is the Lord of the Whites. He is the Lord of the Zulus. He is the Lord of all men. He is the Son of the Heavens. Do you derive your powers from him? He is power. With Christ in your heart, you're stronger than all the regiments on earth. If Christ is power, why did he not save himself? Christ had to die so that the heavens would pass that power on to me. The youth they've given me is proof that I've inherited that power. Heavens belong to Zul and Shaga is their son. If the swallows wish to be my friends, they must remember that in this land, there is only one Kosi Amakosi. Only one king of kings. Shaka. is a gift from the swallows. But you cannot fault uh, Shaka's deductive reasoning. Christ to heaven, heaven to Zulu, Zulus to Shaka. I wouldn't be surprised if someday Christ were wedged snugly into Zulu genealogy. That seems to be the curious legacy of Jesus to be adopted by others. Did he say youth? Youth? To the casserole, Francis. Your added touch for show. Didn't really think it'd go unnoticed, did you? Things we've rejuvenated him, not just aesthetically, physiologically. I wish you'd stop doing that. What? Thinking. It always seems to get us into deeper trouble. It also gets us more of what we want. Gagan can, gagan can, 
I, Shaka, king of the Zulus and of the country of Natal, do hereby on the 7th of November in the year of our Lord, 1824, and in the presence of my chiefs and of my free will, grant, make over, and sell unto F.G. Farewell and Company the entire and full possession in perpetuity of the port or harbor of Natal together with the islands therein and the surrounding country, with all rights to the ivory, rivers, mines, and articles of all denominations contained therein, in witness whereof I have placed my hand before the said F.G. Farewell, whom I hereby acknowledge as the sole chief of the said country with full power and authority, I do this as reward for the White's kind attention to me in my illness from a wound. Lieutenant Sir. Romane, du bist besucht. They are like monkeys trying to steal the autumn harvest, and yet to treat them like kings. Why, Gossi? If the whites offer you wings, it is because they wish to make you their victim. because you're not a practical man. All right, I'll be practical. The bottle's almost empty. What happens when it runs out? Your pessimism isn't very British. Why should it be? I'm Irish. 
I hereby solemnly declare that henceforth this bay be named Port Natal and the surrounding area to be British territory. Mr. Wilkins. God save the gracious king. Long live the King George, hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I reckon we start building ourselves a ship. Get the hell out of here. But of course, I might start sticking us up on those pouts of his. Do let us know when you plan to leave, gentlemen. That attitude's all very well, Mr. Farewell. But somebody's got to start doing something. Or none of us is going to get out of here alive. And how far do you think we'll get without his help? Tell me, because it'll take more than us to put a seafaring ship together. So. Tell him. Oh, don't talk nonsense, man. Nobody tells Shaka anything. When the time is right, gentlemen, we will confront the matter. And until then, do please concentrate on life as it is. What are you going to do when your bleeding Macassar all runs out? Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I think we have visitors. <laughs> Hey! Yes, Uncle Bozi? The great elephant wishes to see you and Mbuyazi immediately. Tell him that we will leave for Kwa Bulawayo this afternoon. You will leave immediately. No one keeps the great elephant waiting. We'll leave as soon as we can. I see ya! Somehow this place is getting more and more ominous by the day. Look, Francis, I don't want to be difficult, but I do think Mr. Oberl has a point. What are we going to do when the hair dye runs out? Oh, by then we'll be back in Cape Town. Won't we let them?
Bombo.